Tranquil Tales. The Fir Tree by Hans Christian Andersen. Far away in the forest, where the warm sun and the fresh air made a sweet resting place, grew a pretty little fir tree. The situation was all that could be desired, and yet it was not happy. It wished so much to be like its tall companions, the pines and firs which grew around it. The sun shone, and the soft air fluttered its leaves, and the little peasant children passed by, prattling merrily. But the fir tree did not heed them. Sometimes the children would bring a large basket of raspberries, or strawberries wreathed in straws, and seat themselves near the fir tree, and say, Is it not a pretty little tree? Which made it feel even more unhappy than before. And yet, all this while, the tree grew a notch or joint taller every year. For by the number of joints in the stem of a fir tree, we can discover its age. Still, as it grew, it complained. Oh, how I wish I were as tall as the other trees. Then I would spread out my branches on every side, and my crown would overlook the wide world around. I should have the birds building their nests on my boughs, and when the wind blew, I should bow with stately dignity like my tall companions. So discontented was the tree that it took no pleasure in the warm sunshine, the birds, or the rosy clouds that floated over it morning and evening. Sometimes in winter, when the snow lay white and glistening on the ground, there was a little hare that would come springing along and jump right over the little tree's head. Then how mortified it would feel. Two winters passed, and when the third arrived, the tree had grown so tall that the hare was obliged to run around it. Yet it remained unsatisfied, and would exclaim, Oh, to grow, to grow, if I could but keep on growing tall and old. There is nothing else worth caring for in the world. In the autumn, the woodcutters came, as usual, and cut down several of the tallest trees, and the young fir, which was now grown to its full height, shuddered as the noble trees fell to the earth with a crash. After the branches were lopped off, the trees looked so slender and bare that they could scarcely be recognised. Then they were placed one upon another, upon wagons, and drawn by horses out of the forest. Where could they be going? What would become of them? The young fir tree wished very much to know. So in the spring, when the swallows and the storks came, it asked, Do you know where those trees were taken? Did ye meet them? The swallows knew nothing, but the stork, after a little reflection, nodded his head and said, Yes, I think I do. As I flew from Egypt, I saw several new ships, and they had fine masts that smelt like fur. These must have been the trees, and I assure you they were stately. They sailed right gloriously. Oh, how I wish I were tall enough to go to the sea, said the fir tree. Tell me, what is this sea, 
and what does it look like? It would take too much time to explain, a great deal too much, said the stork, quickly flying away. Rejoice in thy youth, said the sunbeam. Rejoice in thy fresh growth and in the young life that is in thee. And the wind kissed the tree and the dew watered it with tears. But the fir tree regarded them not. Christmas time drew near and many young trees were cut down some that were even smaller and younger than the fir tree, who enjoyed neither rest nor peace, with longing to leave its forest home. These young trees, which were chosen for their beauty, kept their branches, and were also laid on wagons, and drawn by horses far away out of the forest. Where are they going? asked the fir tree. They are not taller than I am. Indeed, one is not so tall. And why do they keep all their branches? Where are they going? We know, we know, sang the sparrows. We have looked in at the windows of the houses in the town. And we know what is done with them. Oh, you cannot think what honour and glory they receive. They are dressed up in the most splendid manner. We have seen them standing in the middle of a warm room and adorned with all sorts of beautiful things. Honey cakes, gilded apples, playthings and many hundreds of wax tapers. And then asked the fir tree, trembling in all its branches. And then what happens? We did not see any more, said the sparrows, but this was enough for us. I wonder whether anything so brilliant will ever happen to me, thought the fir tree. It would be better even than crossing the sea. I long for it almost with pain. Oh, when will Christmas be here? I am now as tall and well grown as those which were taken away last year. Oh, that I were now laid on the wagon, or standing in the warm room, with all that brightness and splendour around me. Something better and more beautiful is to come after, or the trees would not be so decked out. Yes, what follows will be grander and more splendid. What can it be? I am weary with longing. I scarcely know what it is that I feel. Rejoice in our love, said the air and the sunlight. Enjoy thine own bright life in the fresh air. But the tree would not rejoice, though it grew taller every day. And winter and summer, its dark green foliage might be seen in the forests, while passers-by would say, What a beautiful tree! A short time before Christmas, the discontented fir tree was the first to fall. As the axe cut sharply through the stem and divided the pith, the tree fell with a groan to the earth, conscious of pain and faintness, and forgetting all its dreams of happiness, in sorrow at leaving his home in the forest. It knew that it should never again see its dear old companions, the trees, nor the little bushes and many coloured flowers that had grown by his side. Perhaps not even the birds, nor was the journey at all pleasant. The tree first recovered itself while being unpacked in the courtyard of a house, with several other trees, and it heard a man say, We only want one, and this is the prettiest, this is beautiful. 
Then came two servants in grand livery, and carried the fir tree into a large and beautiful apartment. Pictures hung on the walls, and near the great stove stood great china vases with lions on the lids. There were rocking chairs, silken sofas, large tables covered with pictures, books and playthings that had cost a hundred times a hundred dollars. At least so said the children. Then the fir tree was placed in a large tub full of sand. But green blaze hung all around it, so that no one could know it was a tub. And it stood on a very handsome carpet. Oh, how the fir tree trembled. What was going to happen to him now? Some young ladies came in, and the servants helped them to adorn the tree. On one branch they hung little bags cut out of coloured paper, and each bag was filled with sweet meats. From other branches hung gilded apples and walnuts, and all around were hundreds of red, blue and white tapers, which were fastened upon the branches. Dolls, exactly like real men and women, were placed under the green leaves, and the tree had never seen such things before. And at the top was fastened a glittering star made of gold tinsel. Oh, it was very beautiful. This evening, they all exclaimed, how bright it will be. Oh, that the evening were come, thought the tree and the tapers lighted, then I should know what else is going to happen. Will the trees of the forest come to see me? Will the sparrows peep in at the windows, I wonder, as they fly? Should I grow faster here, and keep on all these ornaments, during summer and winter? But guessing was of very little use. His back ached with trying, and this pain is as bad for a slender fir tree as headache is for us. At last, the tapers were lighted, and then what a glistening blaze of splendour the tree presented. It trembled so with joy in all its branches, that one of the candles fell among the green leaves, and burnt some of them. Help! Help! exclaimed the young ladies, but there was no danger, for they quickly extinguished the fire. After this, the tree tried not to tremble at all. Though the fire frightened him, he was so anxious not to hurt any of the beautiful ornaments, even while their brilliancy dazzled him. And now the folding doors were thrown open, and a troop of children rushed in, as if they intended to upset the tree, and were followed more slowly by their elders. For a moment, the little ones stood silent with astonishment, and then they shouted for joy till the room rang, and they danced merrily around the tree, while one present, after another was taken from it. What are they doing? What will happen next? thought the tree. At last the candles burned down to the branches and were put out. Then the children received permission to plunder the tree. Oh, how they rushed upon it! There was such a riot that the branches cracked and had it not been fastened with the glistening star to the ceiling, it must have been thrown down. Then the children danced about with their pretty toys, and no one noticed the tree, except the children's maid, who came and peeped among the branches, to see if an apple or a fig had been forgotten. 
A story, a story, cried the children, pulling a little fat man towards the tree. Now we shall be in green shade, said the man, as he seated himself under it. And the tree will have the pleasure of hearing also. But I shall only relate one story. What shall it be? Ivedaved or Humpty Dumpty, who fell downstairs, but soon got up again, and at last married a princess. Ivedaved cried some, Humpty Dumpty cried others, and there was a famous uproar. But the fir tree remained quite still and thought to himself, Shall I have anything to do with all of this? Ought I to make a noise too? But he had already amused them as much as they wished. Then the old man told them the story of Humpty Dumpty, how he fell downstairs and was raised up again and married a princess. And the children clapped their hands and cried, Tell another, tell another, for they wanted to hear the story of Ivade Avade. But this time they had only Humpty Dumpty. After this, the fir tree became quite silent and thoughtful. Never had the birds in the forest told such tales as Humpty Dumpty, who fell downstairs and yet married a princess. Ah, yes. So it happens in the world, thought the fir tree. He believed it all, because it was related by such a pleasant man. Ah well, he thought, who knows, perhaps I will fall down too and marry a princess. And he looked forward joyfully to the next evening, expecting to be again decked out with lights and playthings, gold and fruit. Tomorrow I will not tremble, thought he. I will enjoy all my splendour, and I shall hear the story of Humpty Dumpty again, and perhaps evade evade. And the tree remained quiet and thoughtful all night. In the morning, the servants and the housemaid came in. Now, thought the fir tree, all my splendour is going to begin again. But they dragged him out of the room and upstairs to the garret and threw him on the floor in a dark corner where no daylight shone and there they left him. What does this mean? thought the tree. What am I to do here? I can hear nothing in a place like this and he leaned against the wall, and thought, and thought. And he had time enough to think, for days and nights passed, and no one came near him. And when at last somebody did come, it was only to push away some large boxes in a corner, so the tree was completely hidden from sight, as if it had never existed. It is winter now, thought the tree. The ground is hard and covered with snow, so that people cannot plant me. I shall be sheltered here, I dare say, until spring comes. How thoughtful and kind everyone is to me. Still, I wish this place were not so dark and so dreadfully lonely, with not even a little hair to look at. How pleasant it was out in the forest, while the snow lay on the ground, and the hare would run by, yes, and jump over me too, although I did not like it then. Oh, it is terribly lonely here. Squeak, squeak, said a little mouse, creeping cautiously towards the tree. Then came another and they both sniffed at the fir tree and crept in and out between the branches. Oh, it is very cold here, said the little mouse. If it were not, 
We would be very comfortable here, wouldn't we, old fir tree? I am not old, said the fir tree. There are many who are older than I am. Where do you come from? asked the mice, who were full of curiosity. And what do you know? Have you seen the most beautiful places in the world? And can you tell us all about them? And have you been in the storeroom, where cheeses lie on the shelf, and hams hang from the ceiling? One can run about on tallow candles there, one can go in thin and come out fat. I know nothing of that, said the fir tree, but I know the wood where the sun shines and the birds sing. And then the tree told the little mice all about his youth. They had never heard such an account in their lives, and after they had listened to it attentively, they said, What a number of things you have seen! You must have been very happy! Happy? exclaimed the fir tree, and then, as he reflected on what he had been telling them, he said, Ah yes, after all, those were happy days, but when he went on and related all about Christmas Eve and how he had been dressed up with cakes and lights, the mice said, How happy you must have been, you old fir tree. I am not old at all, replied the tree. I only came from the forest this winter. I am now checked in my growth. What splendid stories you can tell, said the little mice. And the next night, four other mice came with them to hear what the tree had to tell. The more he talked, the more he remembered, and then he thought to himself, Yes, those were happy days, but they may come again. Humpty Dumpty fell downstairs and yet he married a princess. Perhaps I may marry a princess too. And the fir tree thought of the pretty little birch tree that grew in the forest. A real princess. A beautiful princess she was to him. Who is Humpty Dumpty? asked the little mice. And then the tree related the whole story. He could remember every single word and the little mice were so delighted with it that they were ready to jump to the top of the tree. The next night, a great many more mice made their appearance, and on Sunday, two rats came with them. But they said it was not a pretty story at all, and the little mice were very sorry, for it made them also think less of it. Do you know only that one story? asked the rats. Only that one, replied the fir tree. I heard it on the happiest evening of my life. But I did not know I was so happy at the time. We think it is a very miserable story, said the rats. Don't you know any stories about bacon or tallow in the storeroom? No, replied the tree. Many thanks to you then, replied the rats, and they went their ways. The little mice also kept away after this, and the tree sighed and said, It was very pleasant when the merry little mice sat around me and listened while I talked. Now that is all past too. However, I shall consider myself happy when someone comes to take me out of this place. But would this ever happen? Yes. One morning people came to clear up the garret. The boxes were packed away and the tree was pulled out of the corner and thrown roughly on the floor. Then the servants dragged it out upon the staircase where the daylight shone. Now life is beginning again, said the tree, 
rejoicing in the sunshine and fresh air. Then it was carried downstairs and taken into the courtyard, so quickly that it forgot to think of itself, and could only look about. There was so much to be seen. The court was close to a garden, where everything looked blooming. Fresh and fragrant roses hung over the little palings. The linden trees were in blossom, while the swallows flew here and there crying. Twit, 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 my mate is coming. But it was not the fir tree they meant. Now I shall live, cried the tree joyfully, spreading out his branches. But alas, they were all withered and yellow, and it lay in a corner, among weeds and nettles. The star of gold paper still hung to the top of the tree, and glittered in the sunshine. In the same courtyard, Two of the merry children were playing who had danced around the tree at Christmas time and had been so happy. The youngest saw the gilded star and ran and pulled it off the tree. Look what is sticking to the ugly old fir tree, said the child, treading on the branches till they crackled under his boots and the tree saw all the fresh, bright flowers in the garden, and then looked at itself, and wished it had remained in the dark corner of the garret. It thought of its fresh youth in the forest, of the merry Christmas evening, and of the little mice who had listened to the story of Humpty Dumpty. Past, past, said the poor tree. Oh, had I but enjoyed myself, while I could have done so, but now it is too late. Then a lad came, and chopped the tree into small pieces, till a large bundle lay in a heap on the ground. The pieces were placed in the fire, and they blazed up brightly, while the tree sighed, so deeply that each sigh was like a little pistol shot. Then the children, who were at play, came and seated themselves in front of the fire, and looked at it, and cried, Pop! Pop! But at each pop, which was a deep sigh, the tree was thinking of a summer day in the forest, or of some winter night there, when the stars shone brightly, and of Christmas evening, and of Humpty Dumpty, the only story it had ever heard, or knew how to relate, till at last it was consumed. The boys still played in the garden, and the youngest wore the gold star on his breast, with which the tree had been adorned during the happiest evening of its existence. Now all was past, the tree's life was past, and the story also past, for all stories must come to an end, some time or another. The End Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Merry Christmas, sleepyheads. Sweet dreams.